What's going on guys, Dalton here and welcome to episode nine of From the Closet to Profit. In this series, I took two shoes out of my personal closet, sold those online and used that money to snowball into a profitable shoe reselling business. If you ended up catching the last episode, we finished off that week with $19.39 left in our shoe fund to go sourcing with. So hoping for some sales to roll in so we can actually get some more inventory sourced. Unfortunately though, after last episode, I went on my Christmas vacation. I'm back now, it's been two weeks. We missed last week's episode. Um, I haven't had a chance to go sourcing yet, but luckily over the past 14 days, we've had 15 sales come in, which is awesome. We're already at over one sale per day. Um, so I just want to make a quick video go going over those 15 sales that came in. And then later in the video, since it was the end of that year, I wanted to go over our numbers and give, give you guys an idea of exactly how much we are profiting, how much inventory we source so far and how much we've been paying for that inventory. So stick around to the end of the video to catch all of that. So as for the shoes that sold while I was away, luckily we had an amazing couple weeks, did just over $850 in sales. So I'm just going to go through those one by one, starting with Poshmark and then eBay, and then I'll finish up with our Mercari sales. If you want to see us actually picking up those shoes, all of these shoes that have sold were picked up in previous closet to profit episodes. So make sure to go catch up on the entire series then come back and just see how fast these shoes are selling and what they're selling for versus how much we paid for them. So to kick it off with our Poshmark sales, we sold these Ultra Boost for $50. So after uh, fees, that nets us $40. And I believe we paid $15 for these just a couple weeks ago. So that was a nice ROI on those. Next up is these Ultra Escalantes or Escalante, however you pronounce that. They sold for $32 on Poshmark. So after fees, and I believe I gave the buyer a $1.50 shipping discount, we were left with $24.60. Next, I got these Reebok Freestyles. We picked those up at Plato's Closet for, I want to say $20. Could have held out for a higher selling price, but they ended up selling for $52. So after fees, that's that that leaves us with $41.60. So just over a double up. And since these came from Plato's Closet, they were in amazing condition, didn't need much cleaning at all. I literally just photographed them and listed them. So to double my money on that, I'm very happy with that. But this model is nice. I definitely think we could have held out for a higher price, but I'm happy to turn the money as fast as we did. And then our last Poshmark sell were these Brooks GTS 19s. They sold for $33 on Poshmark. I also gave this buyer a shipping discount. So after the shipping and fees, we're left with $24.90. And the ROI on these was great. If, if you've seen, I believe the second episode when we didn't have much money to start sourcing with, I ended up going to the Goodwill Bins, the pay by the pound store, found these for I want to say two to three dollars, depending on how much they weighed. So turning two to three dollars into twenty-four dollars is amazing, in my opinion. So if you can live with sourcing at the bins, I'm personally not a big fan of sourcing there. But if you have luck there, it's an amazing place to find cheap, profitable inventory. Moving on to our eBay sales, the first pair that we sold were these Brooks Glycerin. I can't remember the number, but they were a newer Glycerin model. They ended up selling for sixty-eight dollars, free shipping on eBay. All of the eBay sales are going to be free shipping, by the way. Um, so after shipping and fees, that's going to net us $50.32. Moving on, we sold these New Balance Minimus. I believe we only paid seven bucks for these at Goodwill. They ended up selling for $35.00. And these are super lightweight water shoes, so they shipped first class. So after shipping and fees, we were left with $25.41. Next sale are these Keen Targhee 2 uh, hiking shoes. These sold for $42 on eBay, and after shipping and fees, that netted us $26.73. Next sale is these Irish Setter Red Wing uh, boots. We actually found these at Goodwill brand new for $50, which was uh, quite a bit of money to pay up for, especially with how small our buying budget was. But I noticed that there were only two listed and nine sold. So they sell frequently enough that I decided to go ahead and risk the $50 investment. Um, I took the first decent offer that I got at $125. I had them listed at $150. Um, so after shipping and fees, we were left with $88.69. So a almost $40 profit on those. And they sold, I want to say, in just over a week. So in my opinion, a $40 profit on a single pair of shoes didn't need cleaning, just need photographed and listed. Um, I'm very happy with that. Again, this was another one that we could have held out for more money. But since I had so much of our, um, our sourcing money tied up into those shoes, I wanted to flip them as fast as possible. Next up is these Asics Gel Nimbus. I want to say 23s. This is another newer model of Asics. These ended up selling for $55 on eBay. After shipping and fees, we're left with $35.61. Next, we sold another pair of Keens. These are the Keen Voyagers. They sold for $54. 
And after shipping and fees, that leaves us with $35.87. Next, we sold a pair of Allbirds. A lot of people think that you can't sell Allbirds on eBay, but they, they did have a, a time where they were veroing Allbirds listings on eBay, which basically means um, you're not allowed to sell Allbirds. And if you list some, you can get your account is at risk for suspension, uh, but I think that was temporary. I've sold plenty of Allbirds on eBay in the past 60 to 90 days. I have them listed all the time, so don't be afraid to list your Allbirds on eBay. These sold for $54, free shipping, and after the shipping and fees, we were left with $36 and one penny. And then our last eBay sale was actually our only full price sale were these Crocs. A. Lee wedges, and they sold for $39.87. After shipping and fees, these also were uh, light enough to go first class. First class just means it ships under a pound and you'll get a cheaper postage um, fee versus paying for priority mail. So after the shipping and fees, we were left with $27.60. And then lastly, moving on to our Mercari sales, we sold these Under Armour Hover Sonic shoes for $49. And then after shipping and fees, we were left with $33.81. Next, we sold another pair of Allbirds Wool Runners on Mercari for $48. After shipping and fees, we're left with $31.81. And then lastly, the other pair of shoes that we had to pay up for, and I think the same episode that we paid up for the um, those Irish Setter Boots, I ended up paying, um, they were $40 at Goodwill, but I had a $5 off coupon. So I got these Uggs for $35, and they ended up selling in just about the same time frame as the, the Red Wing Boots, a little over a week for $110 on Mercari. So after shipping and fees, left over with $81.41. So well over doubled our money on that $35 investment. That was a, a great pickup in my opinion. So there's the 15 pairs of shoes that sold for me while I was on Christmas vacation. I hope you got something out of that. Maybe you're seeing some brands that you didn't know about or something that you can implement into sourcing going forward. But as I mentioned before, we finished up last week with $19.39 in the shoe fund. So adding in all of our post shipping and fees numbers to our shoe fund, we were left over with $623.44, which is the most we've had in the shoe fund since we started this series. So I'm super excited to get out and go sourcing with that money this week. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I wanted to hop in and go over our exact numbers that we've done since starting this, um, this series. We're nine episodes in, so pretty much nine weeks into this shoe business. I'd argue that if you tried to do this as well, it wouldn't take you nine weeks to accomplish what we We've accomplished so far, uh, mainly because I'm just sourcing one day a week for this series uh, because I'm running my main shoe business as well. So it's not a main focus of mine to grow this closet to profit series as fast as possible. So I'm pretty much doing one sourcing trip per week. Uh, but over the past nine weeks, our total sales number has been $2,564.31. And it's only taken 53 sales for us to net or to not net, but gross that sales number. Um, on those sales, we paid $388.80 in fees. And the shipping we paid on that was $357.08. So after the shipping and fees, we're left with $1,818.43. Uh, only thing that we have to take out of that to find our actual profit is our cost of goods. And the way that I find the cost of goods, I use the average inventory method, I believe is what it's called, which basically means you just keep track of the total number of units you're buying. You keep track of how much you spent on those. So you can get an average number per unit by just dividing the total number spent by the number of units purchased. And then you keep track of how many sales you make, which we made 53 sales. And then you'll just multiply the sales by the average price that you're paying per pair. And that's going to give you your cost of goods sold. Over the course of this series, we've picked up 110 total pairs. We have 57 in inventory right now, as well as the 53 that we've already sold. And for those shoes, we have paid $1,075.09. So dividing that number by the 110 pairs of shoes that we've picked up, we're left with $9.77. So on average, we're paying $9.77 per pair. That includes all of the shoes that we've paid up for, including the, the uh, Irish Setter boots that we paid 54, all the sourcing that we did at Play-Doh's where we also picked up a pair of shoes for $50, those Uggs that we paid $35 for, everything's included in that number. So on average, we're paying $9.77 per pair. So multiplying that by the, the 53 sales that we've had leaves us with $517.81 to use as our cost of goods sold for the previous nine episodes. So subtracting that from our total, the $1,800 that we got after the shipping and fees were left with 
$1,300.62 as our net profit. Now, now since it is January, I figured we go ahead and talk about taxes because I didn't address that in any of the previous episodes. Pretty much what I like to do in my personal business, just so I'm prepared for tax season, is I set aside 25% of all of my net profits. So of that $1,300 that we've netted so far, I just take 25% of that and set that to the side so when tax season comes around, I have the money ready to pay for it. I haven't been taking out our taxes on each and every episode. I'm not going to do that moving forward. This is the only episode that I'm gonna mention it in uh, just because I don't really need to be doing separate math from my main business and the closet to profit. Uh, but to at least get, let you guys be aware that you are going to be needing to pay taxes on the um, profits that you're making. In this episode, I wanted to go over the uh, the 25% that I would have set aside for taxes on that number, on that $1,300 would be $325.15. So I'm gonna go ahead and deduct that from our shoe fund. So since we were left with $623.44 after those sales that we just went over, I'm taking out the taxes that we're setting to the side and we're gonna be left with $298.29 left to go sourcing with this week kind of sucks you always got to take that hit but it's just part of the, it's just part of the business you go and get a regular job you're going to be tax, taxed on that income if you want to be your own boss you're going to get taxed on that income as well so just make sure it's something that you are prepared for and ready for every single year you don't want to get caught up and oh oh money the irs because you weren't ready to pay taxes now last thing that i want to mention in this video if you're new to the series what I'm doing as far as investing in supplies to run my business, such as a photo setup, cleaning supplies, whatever it is, I'm buying two of them and then I'm giving them away to a one random commenter. And in last week's episode, I decided to invest into a photo setup and the giveaway that I did was basically just a $50 giveaway to go towards whatever kind of photo setup that you wanted to do. All you had to do was answer that week's question of the day to be entered into the giveaway. And since it was just before New Year's, the question of the day was what your New Year's resolution was or your goal for 2022. And the random comment that was picked was from Jody Cardinal. And she said that one of her goals for the New Year's is to list more items and do it more often. And honestly, I really love that answer. A lot of people say that they want more sales than last year. They want to do this number in sales. And while that's a great goal to have, you're not exactly in control of how many sales you get. And what I mean by that is you're not the one pressing purchase for your buyers. The buyers have to make that decision on their own. So it's better in my opinion to set a listing goal because that is something you can control. If you only listed five items per day last year, bump it up to seven. Or if you just listed seven last last month, bump it up to 10. That's something that you can improve on year after year, month after month, day after day, get just a little bit better than you were yesterday. Um, I just personally believe that's a better goal to set. Also look at how your listings are structured, get better at listing, get more efficient at listing. Those are the kind of goals that I would set moving into 2022. So we don't have a giveaway scheduled this week because I didn't pick up anything in this episode. Hopefully we can get the ball rolling again next week as we go out sourcing again. But I still did wanna finish this video with a question of the day. And today I wanna know what is the one area that you need to improve on the most in your business, whether that's listing, photographing, sourcing, whatever it is, leave that down in the comments below. We'll talk about it down there. If you got any value out of this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more shoe reselling content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified every time I post future videos. I'll see you guys in the next video.